What do your social media posts, likes, comments, views, searches, scrolling, or whatever you're doing say about you? Experts usually break down social media users' activities into two categories, active or passive. When you think of active social media use, people tend to think of things like making posts or commenting on other people's posts. Passive social media use has been conceptualized by things like just scrolling, just watching videos, looking at memes. But a new study at Washington University in St. Louis is changing that, suggesting a new way to better understand social media use. Social media and mental health and well-being is something that people have been interested in for quite some time. Closest the field has really gotten is passive versus active social media use, which there's very little consensus about exactly how to measure passive versus active use. Maybe there's just more to it than that. Allison Tuck is first author of the study and a PhD candidate in clinical psychology and arts and sciences. I came to work with Dr. Renee Thompson, who is an associate professor here in our department. Um, and she and I were chatting. I voiced this interest to her and she said, you know, it's great. Sounds really interesting let's do it. So the work began. The study had a series of steps involving coding, big data, and surveys with study participants. What we did here was we figured out how are people using it? What surprised us the most was that active versus passive social media use really did not seem like the way to classify this data. When the data came back, we were able to analyze it, apply some fancy statistics, and long story short was find that there are ultimately four different categories of social media use. Essentially, Tuck and team created a new tool to evaluate social media use. The four categories provide insights about behavior traits and personality. First on the list, the belief-based category of use. Belief-based social media use seems to be all about using social media to feel or reaffirm negative beliefs. So this is where we're seeing things like doom scrolling, like actively looking up and engaging with content that you disagree with or that you find negative. It could also be posting about something that you disagree with or is negative. So this is where we're seeing a lot of those behaviors that we think are associated with using social media to get kind of riled up. Then there's consumption-based use. That's where we're seeing a lot of our scrolling, watching videos, looking at memes. It's consuming. It's using social media to consume. And next, image-based social media use. Trying to make a favorable social image on social media or monitoring the social image that you may be making. The theme is that it seems to be activities that are really caught up in what you look like on social media. Lastly, there's comparison-based use. It's all about using social media to compare yourself to others or to your own past. That's where we're seeing people saying things like they're using social media to compare their life or experiences to other people's, to compare their bodies to other people's. What I thought was interesting was also people reporting that they're using social media to look at their own past experiences, to reminisce about that their past. So to remember that vacation that they took a couple of years ago when it was bright and sunny and now it's December and they're miserable. The scale can be used to analyze behaviors on any social media platform that allows users to create profiles, connect with other users, and view lists of connected users such as Facebook, Instagram, X, Snapchat, Reddit, and TikTok. What we are trying to do is help people understand how they are using social media with the ultimate goal being how can we start helping people engage in healthier versus um, less healthy types of social media use. Tuck says it's important to continue investigating the different types of social media use. She's already started a new study. Now we are really starting to look at when we tell people to engage in each of these four types of use, how do their emotions change? But it also told us a lot about what these four different types of social media use are associated with. So for example, belief-based social media use is associated with lower life satisfaction. Comparing yourself, that we see repeatedly is associated with greater depressive symptomology, uh, lower self-esteem, a whole host of uh, negative personality traits. 
we're starting to ask questions about how are people specifically using these four different types of social media to influence their emotions. And so we're really just starting to set the foundation, lay the groundwork for being able to ask these more advanced questions. 